been a hot minute. The last time we spoke was in November, I think, when we were in a little treehouse holiday. Um, yeah, what has happened since then? Christmas has come and gone. We've had a very stressful festive period. Um, I had to prepare for an exam in January, so it took a long time to prepare for that um, as much as possible over uh, the course of the weeks leading up to Christmas. And then we were traveling for Christmas. We were going to Germany to see all our family, uh, which was really nice spending time with them again. And having Emma there for the first time now it was her first Christmas, which was very special. And um, yeah, we just had a lovely time with them, seeing everyone, doing all the Christmas festivities, eating, eating, eating. <laughs> um, yeah, it was good fun. Um, yeah, I thought I'd give these podcasts a bit of a more kind of chilled, informal vibe. I've seen loads of people that I love and see how they create their podcasts and they have loads of kind of homey um, shots in them. They show a bit of their surroundings of their day to day. They show them sort of knitting and they, I find that so sort of calming and it sets a good mood for the video. And that's it, the kind of vibe that I want to go for. Um, it's specifically Bethany from Well Loved Knits that I've been watching lately. And I really love how chilled and cozy her videos are. So I thought I'd show you guys a little bit of how I've been making some bread recently. Um, and yeah, we're in a different corner of my home today. We're by the window in the kitchen, uh, looking out over our backyard, over all the houses here. And I've got my coffee reheated, of course, because I never finish a warm cup of coffee these days. <laughs> um, in my favorite mug from my friend Jen's Pottery in Glasgow and I've got my, oh you'll see, one of my whips. I've got my whip here, my festival sweater that I'm still working on. Um, yeah, and I thought, you know, let's just have a chat, see how everybody has been. Um, yeah, like I said, we've been really busy over the Christmas period. I had a big exam to prep for, um, for my PhD viva. 
And that's all done and dusted now. So finally finished the PhD. <laughs> it was a long time coming, especially with COVID, putting a spanner in loads of things that I had planned. And then um, I actually eventually ended up working for the Lighthouse Lab here in Glasgow. So we were doing the COVID testing um, and I actually started, I think the in the second week of its existence. So it was there from the very beginning and then only stopped um, when I got to the end of my pregnancy um, and then went on maternity leave and then it was sort of changed into a different type of lab. Um, but I've since left there um, and yeah, now fin finally finished my PhD and I think in the next few months we are probably going to start to transition a little bit and see if Emma can go into a nursery and um, I want to see if I can get some sort of part-time work maybe to sort of stay with her for the majority of the week and then um, start working again as well. And I think once she's settled in nursery and um, once we know and feel confident that she likes the environment, then I can look for something um, more permanent again and full-time. But yeah, that's the plan. And yeah, how about we just get started with all the things that I have finished recently. I've got nothing here because like I said I'm in a kind of just corner here on my um, seating area in the kitchen but I should cut away of everything. So it's actually only two things that I finished because it was uh, a very stressful time like I said with all the exam prep. Um, the first one that I finished and um, I do want to say I finished it before Christmas was a Christmas present for my husband. It was the Zipper Sweater Men by Petit Knit. And I used Drops Nepal in light gray uh, for the zipper sweater. And it was such a joy to knit, honestly. It was very well um, kind of written. The construction is fairly easy. And she has those help videos on her website, which did help me a lot, especially when when knitting the inner facing for the zipper, that really helped seeing what she actually meant. And I did end up making a such a terrible mistake. Oh, when I realized that I've made the mistake, I had the entire body finished and I made it literally at the collar. So you have to, you knit the collar and then you fold it. And then when you do that, she asks you to put five stitches at the beginning and the end of the round on hold. Or not the round, but you know, at the beginning and end of piece. You put them on hold and then you pick them up to start knitting the facing on the inside. For some reason, I misunderstood and I put these stitches on hold on the outside of the sweater, not on the inside um, of the collar. And so I had to... I had to open it up basically and then work with the Kitchener stitch to close up the five stitches here in the front where you can see it on the outside and then open them up in the back so that I could then pick them up to knit the facing. Oh my god, I was literally so mad at myself for not having read the instructions properly or even just checked the videos out before. But I think I managed to do it okay. And after blocking, you can't really tell anymore. So that was my big hoo-ha with the zipper sweater. I thought it'd be the zipper and sewing that in, that would be the hard bit. But no, it turns out reading the instructions was the hard bit for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, aside from that, it was a very easy, straightforward knit. I really enjoyed it. I loved the way it turned out. Sewing in the zipper was really not that big of a deal. Um, I think I think Lizzie from Hive Knits kind of put a bit of fear in me because she said she had such issues with it the first time. So I thought, oh my god, how is this gonna go? But then I heard, I read somebody on Instagram who's recently done it. I just can't remember who it was. I read that she had um, sewn in the zipper before blocking and that was really not a good idea because obviously after blocking the wool changes its shape a little bit and sometimes the wool expands a bit or contracts so she recommended definitely sewing it in after and I thought that's such a good idea that's a really great tip so I've done that and I made sure to um, block the 
the open part of the collar and then the facing part on the inside to block it really well, make sure the edges are all straight and nothing's curling. Um, and that helped massively to keep the stitches straight. And then we have a lot of it, a much easier time to sew in the zipper in the end. And the video that's on her website was really great to show how you're supposed to align it. And yeah, and then I done it all by hand just because I'd find it too tricky to align the back zipper and the front facing properly and close enough to the zipper if I'd done it with my sewing machine. So I, and it's really not that long. So it's definitely doable by hand and quite easy to do, I'd say. So yeah, it was good fun. A lot of new things that I learned from that project. And the only thing I would change is the wool for the next time. Um, I love the Nepal, the Drops Nepal range. Very comfortable, very cozy, great choice of colors. Of course, not very expensive as we all know, but the big problem is that it piles up so quickly, massively quickly. And it's just starting to look a bit tattered and worn quite quickly. So I think next time it'd be better if um, if I mix it with something else that doesn't pile so quickly or that prevents that a little bit. That's the only kind of hiccup that I had with the whole project. So yeah, definitely um, a lovely project if you want to learn how to use other materials like zippers in your knitting. Um, the second thing that I had finished was the Telma scarf by Gregoria Fibers. Um, as you know, the so Sophie scarf, yeah, the Sophie scarf, it's been going around Instagram for ages and it's kind of exploded ever since the pattern came out. And while it's nice and really easy to do, I think it's just a bit plain. I don't know, I'm not a fan of gorgeous stitch for some reason. And so I thought, I do want a wee tiny scarf that you can just tie around once, maybe for the um, like fall and spring seasons, where it's not too cold so that you need a full on big scarf, but it's still a little bit of something that keeps you warm. So I thought I'll try out that pattern and um, when I finished it I thought oh this would be so nice for my friend Claire. Um, she's really knitworthy, she loves the stuff that I make for her and I thought she's a very stylish person who would love a little accessory like that. I think she she's gonna style it really greatly. So um, I decided to gift it to her um, as one of her Christmas presents. Um, but I'll put in a little picture that I took for Instagram as well. So yeah, it's a very straightforward pattern, super easy. It's just knits, purls, and then yarn overs that make up the design. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. It went by really quickly as well. I think I'm definitely gonna make it again for myself, but maybe with a different kind of wool. So I've used Drops Flora for this one because I had it left over from a frog project. Um, but it's not the softest. I can't remember the mix that it is. I think it's more wool than alpaca. And then Nepal is the other way around. I think so. But it was a little bit itchy. So I think I'm going to mix it next time. Maybe with um, something a bit softer like alpaca. Don't know. Um, but definitely a lovely project. And I've never made anything by Gregoria, Gregoria fibers before as well. But the pattern was very well written. Easy, straightforward. Um, yeah, and I definitely want to knit more things by her in future. Okay, hi, I'm back. <laughs> the lights are on, so sorry if this doesn't look as nice anymore. <laughs> but that's the way it is, living in Scotland in the winter. The light is on by literally like four o'clock. <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna work with it. Um, yeah, so those are literally my only two finished objects. Um, but yeah, we just didn't have very much time. Um, but it's okay. Um, I finished what I needed for Christmas. And yeah, I've got more time now. Like I said, the five I had to take priority. So um, now on to what I'm working on right now, maybe. It's really only two things that I'm working on just now. Um, one of them is the festival sweater still. Oh my God. <laughs> 
can't believe I'm showing this again. It's taking a long time. You know when you work on a project and then you've just been at it for so long that you just kind of lose your love for it a little bit? I think that's what happened with this one. I've just been at it for so many months. I can't even remember when I started it. Um, but it's getting there. I mean, I'm just doing the second sleeve right now. So I can show you this way around. Here we go, there we go. So body is done, second sleeve, and then got the front sleeve. I absolutely love how it turned out. It's very, very cozy. The wool is really lovely as well. I've never knitted anything that big with any sand in this garden before. So I'm really looking forward to wearing it. It feels super soft, but um, quite thick as well. And so I think it's gonna be a really warm, lovely sweater. Just in time for the end of winter, but that's okay. <laughs> the whole idea behind this one is that it goes with the one that I made for Emma so that we can be matching while she still lets me put her and myself in the same clothes. I'm gonna um, do as much of it as I can. So that's why I've made the festival sweater for myself um, and for Emma. And yeah, hopefully finish the sleeve in the next few days and then block it. And the other thing that I have finished, uh, that I've started is another Dahlia cardigan this time one for Emma and it's in a nice, um, I forgot what the color is called, but it's a dark dusky pink color. Um, it's from Sandness as well. It's made in the alpaca, the silk alpaca uh, variety. Yeah, it's looking really lovely. I love making the Dahlia patterns. They're just so beautiful. I, I just literally can't get enough of them. So I made um, a Dahlia sweater for me a while ago, a few years ago, and I made the Dahlia cardigan um, baby for a friend's baby, and I embroidered her name on the back, and then now I'm making one for Emma for her next size up wardrobe. Um, yeah, and that has just about the lace work finished, so I'm starting on the body now, splitting for the sleeves, starting on the body. So yeah, knitting away on that, but that's my kind of small portable project that will just kind of trickle along in the background and then I've already started a swatch for the next thing that I want to knit for myself. I should really start something for my mom but I'm in love with the the yarn that I picked for this other project. It's the Snowfield Slipover by Coco Amour Knits and it's this lovely thick, not really chunky but like knitted in um, on eight millimeters. So um, kind of creating a thicker fabric with um, a high kind of turtleneck neckline which looks so amazing. It goes on a little bit longer than you'd normally knit and it just looks really cozy and I think it's going to be quite easy to style and I've never made a slip over before because I'm always umming and eyeing whether it's really something that would suit me. Um, I don't know, I'm not the biggest sort of fashion style icon, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, I just feel like I don't have a lot of style, but um, slipovers are just, they look so interesting and I love how people wear them with long sleeves, with blouses, and shirts, or just with a t-shirt. I feel like they're quite versatile and sometimes it's nice to only have something warm on your body. It doesn't make you feel as hot. I think that when you're fully covered with arms and everything, so I think it might be a great piece as well to just um, give a bit more warmth, but not as much as a cardigan or um, a jumper would. So I really want to try them. So I thought something on big needles that goes by quickly um, and just fairly easy to style. Yeah, because you don't have many options with a high turtleneck. It doesn't really matter what, you know, if you're wearing a shirt or anything underneath. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a try. I hope it's gonna, I think it's gonna go quickly anyway, so we'll see. Um, yeah, that's definitely in the works. I've ordered the yarn for it. I think if I manage to get some filming done in this site, I'll put in a cutaway, but I would love, yeah, I love the yarn combination. I would love to make something else with it. It drops air and 
in wheat and then the soft tweed in sand and it's giving this lovely sort of speckled effect and the wool is so soft the fabric that it creates is so soft and i think it's going to be super cozy i'm already thinking like on my knit list is another sunday cardigan a sunday cardigan maybe in the they have a gray pebbled sort of effect tweed soft tweed color that I think would go really well with the gray mix in the drops air and a Sunday cardigan in that. Oh my god, that'd be lovely. So I'm kind of eyeing that up. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it wears. I'll see how it wears and washes with the slip over and then other side. But yeah, and also as always, drops is quite affordable. So and you need a lot of yarn for the Sunday cardigan, um, as I remember. So yeah, that's gonna be one of the next projects that I've got in mind. Um, and then I'm trying hard to work through my stash again. There's a few bits that I have little things planned for. I've got yarn for a honey pillow by Petit Knit and I think another Oslo hat is definitely in it. And then um, I, had, I had bought some yarn for a baby Moby sweater but I used something else up in my stash. So I've got a few skeins of a grey um, merino, extra fine merino from Drops that I'm not quite sure what to do with. And the rest is all these individual bits of like one ball of mohair here or half a skein of, I don't know, Phil Colana Awata. I have loads of as well. So I'm not entirely sure what I'll do with that. But yeah, trying hard to reduce my stash. Not because I think it's bad to have tons of balls of yarn in your stash, but honestly, God, I'm just dead afraid of the bugs coming back. I used to have little bugs in my 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 old yarn stash, and it, they ate through almost the entire thing, and I've lost so much of my wool. Because obviously, when they start nibbling, they just go from top to bottom, and that means that every few centimeters, the yarn is going to break. And so you really can't use them at all anymore. And I was so devastated. So now everything's in the Ziploc bags. Everything's got one or two cedar blocks in them. Trying really hard to avoid them. And that's why I think it's just important that I keep my stash amount low. Just because I want to avoid getting any bugs in. Because everything that I use is also some sort of animal or natural fiber. And I think that's what they really love to go for. So that's why I'm always keen on keeping my stash low <laughs> and just buying as I need. But yeah, oh well. Um, okay, so that's all the finished things that I've done uh, and the works in progress. Mm, okay, next we go into acquisitions. I filmed some cutaways before, so I'm trying to remember what I've showed. <laughs> um, one of my favorite things that I bought is definitely the Urban Knitbook by Lenny Holmela, I think is her name. Um, oh, this book is just so pretty to look at, even if I weren't into knitting. I think I just get it for the pictures and the the colors that she's portraying in the pictures. The whole thing is like, it's just a vibe. It's just giving you all the sort of like, all the feels. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's such a pretty book to look at. And I think some of the patterns look really interesting. And I was saying in my last video, I'm trying hard this year to actually work from different pattern designers and not just always go to picking it, even though her stuff is really amazing. Like I said before, classic, timeless, will just never go out of style. Patterns are so easy, so great to work with. Um, but there's so many other great designers out there too, and I'm just not giving them any attention because I'm just knitting pretty knit, so it has to change. Um, yeah, that's why I got her book as well. Um, and there's a fair few patterns from there on my knit list for this year. And I think I'm going to start the sea socks very soon. Um, because I have such beautiful yarn from it. Oh my god, what's it called? Mm. Oh my god, I forgot the name of the person who dyes it, but it's dyed in Scotland. And it's this beautiful purpley yarn. Maybe it's gonna be a wig next time. I'm sure it will be. Um, but it has cashmere in it and um, nylon as well, obviously, for socks. 
and yeah it's just so soft and I cannot wait to use that up um yes so that book definitely a great one check it out if you're in the market for a knitting book I was a bit umming and ahhing because I love having my patterns on my phone or an iPad to take with me to look at them on the go but I think I can just take pictures of the instructions and then knit on the go that's why I was a mm, do I want a knitting book but it's so pretty it's so great to work to look at that I think I'm gonna work around it and then the next thing that I got for myself was a big fat Christmas present <laughs> and it's the new Pity Knit project bags and it's the really large one that I got for myself um I actually did not I anticipate it to be that large but it fits it says it fits an adult size jumper that's why I got it because the other one that I have so it does but it's quite crammed in there um but oh my god literally this project bag fits my baby in it <laughs> um plus a jumper skeins of yarn my notions bag <laughs> um it's massive but it's great to have on the side of my sofa I can just stash everything in there um draw it shot and then Emma will be able to get to it so it's very sturdy as well and it has all these pockets on the side so there's loads of skeins of yarn in there and then like I said my notions bag fits a whole jumper I'm sure it fit probably two or three jumpers to be fair um yeah I really love it definitely if you're in the market for a nice big fat project bag have a look um it's not the cheapest ones but I personally really like that you have the pockets on the sides for a bit more organization. So yeah, um, and my husband was also kind enough to give me the smaller version of it for on the go, which I've already used and it's so nice, so well organized. I'm a sucker for anything that enhances organization. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's also something I bought. Um, something that I delved into, which I've heard of before, but never really given much thought is the pom pom magazine um someone that i know is i don't know if regularly but has created for them before and contributed to the magazine before and so i've heard of it but i've never really looked at it and i actually think it's really really cool they always seem to follow a theme in their issues and i think it's quarterly and yeah, that was interesting knitting patterns, very modern, very fresh and colorful. And I'll definitely be looking for it more in the coming year as well. Because I also think it's nice to support a wee sort of, I don't know if it's Scottish or if it's a UK based um, publisher. But um, yeah, it's like young talent as well, young knitting talent. So why not support? and? Um, have a look and there's always something in there that you'd want to do or something that you could maybe keep um, maybe a friend of yours would like so I'll definitely be checking it out more in future I just got an old copy of it from the website that I ordered the book from and um, just to kind of see when it was on sale but yeah it looks good fun and interesting and definitely be purchasing more of it um I think that's all the acquisitions that I had Oh no, something else was that I ordered with Pity Knit, um, which I've ordered at the end of November and it's only come at the beginning of January, I think because of all the Royal Mail strikes, it just got lost somewhere. Um, it's little, I forgot what they're called, but they're um, bands to put your stitches on hold, but the great thing about it is you just need to pop it onto your needle and then you can slide them over, tie it, and then when you're ready to continue with your sleeve or whatever it is, or if you just want to try on your garment then you can just attach it to the needle again and slip it over so you don't have to actually take up the stitches like you would if you put it on waist yarn so that is really brilliant great dimension i think i'm definitely going to get more for larger needle sizes the ones that i have only i think for like three to four four and a half millimeters um but yeah it looks like a super useful tool and it's already been quite useful I'll definitely be using that in future and then what also came is the backing for the honey pillow, which was supposed to be a Christmas present. That's why I also have the yarn ready, but it just hasn't um, come in time. And I could not face going around and finding fabric, finding a zipper, getting the sewing machine out, sewing it all together. I was just like, that's not gonna happen in, in um, December. So yeah, I mean, 
it's just gonna be living in my house once it's done now so <laughs> Christmas has come and gone the person got something else so <laughs> I'm gonna make that honey pillow for myself I still want to make it it's a lovely design uh interesting stitch to learn so but yeah so that's arrived and I think um acquired that as well I suppose even though it was supposed to be for a present um I'm always looking down here because I can see how much time I have left before the camera shuts off again <laughs> um yeah i think that's all the things that i've bought recently um yeah all the things that i want to talk about so tell me guys how have you been what's on your needles what are you knitting right now which other knitting podcasts are you watching i'm really interested i'm kind of just going off of what youtube suggests um I'm not finding that many people on instagram who are like into podcasting but yeah, I thought we are back on Knitter. Oh, I'll, I'll put in the name here because I'll probably butcher that, that name badly. He's just started on uh, YouTube and I really enjoyed his first episode. So definitely be watching more of him. Like I said, uh, Bethany from, oh, what's her show called? I'm so bad with names. Honestly, I still have baby brain, I kid you not. From Well Love Knits. Bethany from Well Love Knits that I've been watching a lot of. Always excited to see a new episode of Hive Knits in my subscription box with Lizzie. I think she's just really great. Um, and I think our, our knitting pace is similar. <laughs> Honestly, I love watching the Crea Bear knitting podcast, but oh my god, every time when I see her post, I'm like, oh. She'll have so many finished things. She'll have so many whips going. She's like a human knitting machine. She honestly gives me like anxiety about how fast and productive she is. Also with her patterns. I think she's about to bring out her fourth pattern in a season. Oh my god, this girl is on fire. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy her stuff as well. Um, yeah, I think that's... Oh, and then Kuju Makika, I watch a lot as well. Um, really enjoying her um, I don't know if you've seen how she made her wedding dress how she knitted and crocheted her wedding dress oh my god wow honestly wow she was moving in the time she was planning a wedding and she was making the wedding dress and she had six weeks to do it all in oh, hats off to her <laughs> um, that was a really good video as well so yeah that's kind of what I've been watching lately let me know what you guys have been watching. I'd really love to venture out, see more um, podcasts and get to know more people on the community. So yeah, um, I think that's all for me today. Um, enjoy what's left of, I don't know, your weekend, your evening, whenever you're watching this. And then I am definitely going to be back a lot sooner. Next time, 100% with a finished pesto sweater. This is not going to be a whip anymore, I swear. Um, and yeah, just excited to see you guys again, to be up on YouTube again and creating more. Having finished the PhD, having finished Christmas, it's like full steam ahead into 2023. So yeah, um, I will see you guys again soon. Bye.